Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day 25 puzzle using Ivy one last time. In this puzzle, there is a grid of sea cucumbers facing east and south, represented by greater thans and v's. At each step, all the east facing sea cucumbers get a chance to move to the east, but only if there's already an empty grid square there, marked by a dot. Then all the south facing sea cucumbers get a chance to move south, and together that's one step. And the puzzle asks us to figure out how many steps it takes before all the sea cucumbers reach a fixed point, where they stop moving and get stuck, sort of gridlock. And I should add that sea cucumbers live on a torus, so that moving east off the edge of the grid they pop back on the west side, and similarly moving south off the edge of the grid wraps around to the north side. By now this should seem like old hat for ivy. We can test which spots are greater than, so using x equals equals greater than. And we can test which spots are available to the right using one row x equals dot. And then we can put those together to find out which ones need to move. So where there's a greater than and one row x is dot. All right, those are the ones that need to move. The places they're moving to are minus one row m. That's the destinations. And then the other cells that aren't destinations or places that are being moved from are being left alone. So we have those three mutually exclusive Boolean grids, and we need to update the characters in them appropriately. So that's going to be a character of the character code of x, which is the original, uh, has the dots and greater thans, times not d or m. That's going to leave the ones that are being left alone, alone. And then the ones that are moving become dots, and the ones that they're moving to become uh, greater thans. So that should be one eastward step. Now moving south is just moving east on a transposed grid. So let's just save the east mode and we'll uh, abstract away the greater than character. So let's see, we'll say op c move x to start with m equals x equals character and one raw x equals dot. And then d equals, it was minus one wrote m. And then we have this expression where we'll replace the character, and I think that's it. All right, so now we should be able to say greater than move x, the same thing. And to add the south move, we should be able to just do a transposed of v move, transpose of this move x. That should be one step. Let's see. Uh, one step, that does look like the same grid, so that's great. So let's save that. Stepping x is that. So now we need to do n steps. We've done this many times at this point. So we're supposed to see what it looks like after 58 steps. That's what it looks like. All right, that seems okay. So now we're supposed to find out how many steps it takes before they get stuck. And we've done this before too on day 11. You say next is step x. And if it hasn't changed, then that took one step. Otherwise, it takes one plus sync of next. So we say sync of sample is 58, and then sync of input. This may take a second or two. Input was a lot bigger. Oh, 530. All right, that's the answer. On to part two. All right, let's see. Aha, as is customary on day 25, the second star is free. So we've found the sleigh keys and we can click start to help the sleigh and save Santa. It's a beautiful ASCII star animation there. And that's it. Um, let me say thanks to Rob Pike for creating Ivy. I've never used APL or any APL like language before and it's been a lot of fun learning how to think in that kind of language. At the start of this, I really did not intend to use Ivy so much nor even to record a video for every puzzle. But Ivy turned out to be the easiest way to write the vast majority of these and I kept finding new things that seem worth sharing. You know, people often hold up Lisp as an example of a kind of fundamental minimal programming language that will make you think differently about programming. And it certainly is. But this adventure has taught me that APL is that kind of language too, just different. And it's been a lot of fun recording these and I hope you've had fun watching them too. And as a final note, I really enjoyed Advent of Code. Thanks very much to Eric Wassel, which is for what is obviously an enormous amount of work to create these puzzles and run this contest. He does an excellent job. Everyone, have a nice day.